We've all gotten scammy things, emails, uh, offers, deals from time to time. I feel like there's so many out there now that you have to be really careful with what you click on, who you talk to, what you accept, especially online. Uh, more apparently online than anywhere else. There are loads and loads of art scams out there now, uh, specifically directed to artists. It can be a little tricky to uh, point them out or find them. This video is going to talk about art scams and how to tell them apart from an actual person who's interested in buying your pieces versus someone looking to scam you out of money or your art piece. Lots of artists, especially if you are starting out in the industry, can and be quite vulnerable to these kinds of scams because you know when someone's inquiring about your artwork you get really excited and so when you get excited your brain kind of goes into like this happy mode and you kind of look over all the red flags like you would in a relationship or something. There are loads of scams out there, loads, especially in the online world. These scams can consist of fake email or phishing scams, fake competitions or exhibitions, false promises of representation, art submission scams, buy copyright scams, uh, payment fraud, things like that. And payment fraud is probably the most common, especially online. One of the most common scams that I get sent to me is one that I like to call the anniversary or the birthday scam. So someone will actually send me an email stating that they love my work and they want to buy some pieces and it's for their wife's anniversary but they can't pay with a credit card. It has to be by a check because they want to surprise their partner with it. And I think it's pretty obvious nowadays that that's a scam, but again, some new artists still get caught out by that and they get very excited. And like I said, they kind of skip over the red flags when, when reading these emails. There are some things with these particular scams that I have noticed that kind of are the red flags that can be very easy to pick up on. The first being, it's a gift and therefore I don't want to pay the regular method, so via a credit card. They want to send you a check. Never, unless it's from a legitimate company, never accept a check from someone in the mail that you don't know. Because the thing is, even if it was a fake check and your bank was to catch it, they would catch it eventually, not uh, sooner rather than later. So you have to be really careful about accepting checks from people. Uh, especially from people you don't know. The thing about how this scam works is that they get you all excited that they want to buy a couple pieces from you, which for new artists is really appealing, right? And then they say, oh, I'll send you a check. And it's usually like a big amount of money that they're sending you. However, what they do is they send more money on the check than what was agreed upon uh, in your transaction sort of thing. And it's a fake check, of course, like they don't send you a real check. So the idea of the scam is that you put it into your bank account, you know, they'll just say, oh, just send me back the difference because I sent you too much money. Uh, and so you send your real money, the difference of what was overpaid back to the scammer. And then your bank down the line will eventually figure out this check is not real, it's fake. So then you become part of the fraud, you can get into trouble, and you've also lost money for it. So never really accept a check unless you've done your research or you know the person or this is a legitimate company. The thing is with these emails, like I said, there are telltale signs for how to spot a scam within these particular kinds of offers that you get. Well, for starters, the spelling and the way things are spelled, like they'll use crazy fonts, they'll use a bunch of emojis, they'll use weird symbols in their text and in the subject line. They'll also misspell a lot of things, they're usually not very good at spelling. Uh, so keep an eye out for things like that. Another thing that I tend to notice is that when it's a legitimate buyer, when someone really loves a piece, they fall in love with a piece. Whatever that piece is, a particular piece. A lot of these scammers will just say, oh, I just wanna buy one of your pieces. And they don't specify what. They say, oh, I just wanna buy one or, or a couple of your pieces. And they don't really have any 
connection to your work because they're trying to scam you out of money, you know, they're trying to get you excited about the possibility of a sale. They just don't give a shit what it is. So that's another red flag right there. If they're not specific about a piece or even if it's two pieces, you know, they have to be really specific because art is such a specific um, and personal thing for people. It's unless, you know, you're a long time collector and you love everything that a particular artist does, then you would have had built up that, that relationship and that reputation with each other a long time coming sort of thing. But if it's just somebody emailing you out of the blue about buying some art and not specifying what kind of piece and what they're looking for, then you kind of, you can take that as a red flag because it's just, it, it's suspicious. People fall in love with a specific piece. Another thing that I find that people will do in these emails is they won't give you a specific price either. Usually they'll fall in love with a specific piece, they'll ask how much it costs, and they can either take it or leave it or figure out a payment plan or whatever it is that you want to do to work that deal out. But these people typically, I notice, give a price range. Oh, this is a gift for my wife. I want a couple pieces from you. My price range is anywhere from like 500 to 2000 or whatever. And it's this weird range usually. And again, no one serious, no serious art buyers do that. They don't give you just a price range. They love a piece, they'll either pay the money for it or they'll figure out a payment plan or or they'll just be like, okay, it's out of my price range, I won't get it. It's never a price range, never just random pieces. They can always typically pay with the right uh, payment system or format that you trust. There are a couple of scams that are involved with uh, online sellers like Zelly or uh, PayPal. I've had a couple of those directed at me. Always, always, whenever you get someone inquiring about you, whether it's through an email or online, just do a little bit of research. Make sure if something seems a little bit fishy, it usually is. I've had some near misses myself with uh, Zelly. I had a guy contact me through, I think it was Instagram. He had two pieces that he really liked. And so we have that, he's specifically looking at these two pieces and I was like, okay, that's great. And he wanted to pay full price for them. And I was like, that's great. And then um, I offered my payment options, which I do take Zelly, so it's a legitimate form for me but he sent me this weird email about, I have to upgrade my business account on Zelly to, um, to, to pay something. I can't remember exactly the details, but it was weird. And I just looked at it and I went, something's not right. Like Zelly, you don't have a business account with Zelly. Like you don't, it's, it's free to use with your bank. So immediately the alarm bells are going in my head and going, okay, <laughs> something's off here and so in the end I stopped talking to the guy I think he kind of because I asked him a few questions he didn't really respond very well and so I was like all right he knows I'm onto him and I'm just not gonna talk to this guy anymore so it was a shame because it's like oh I really would have loved to have sell those paintings but at the same time a scam is a scam, you know, stay away from that stuff. You have to do your research with things like Zelly, PayPal, make sure it's actually legitimate uh, deals that you're making rather than going in some backwater way. They are like free to use. You shouldn't have to sign up to a special business account. You shouldn't have to do any extra steps that you wouldn't normally do. Like I said, use your intuition here. If it seems off, do your research, look it up. Literally, you can go on Google, type in uh, Zelly scams or PayPal scams or whatever scams there are. And there are, there are sites that will show you and describe to you what the scams are. And they can tell you exactly like this is not a thing or this is a thing, so it's legit. Um, so just do your research. If something feels off, it probably is. I haven't had too much uh, in the way of dealing with other scams. I've mostly dealt with online scams, you know, payment fraud, people trying to, to get money out of you or, or uh, get products out of you and stuff like that. 
There are other kinds of scams out there that I don't have too much experience with, but I know there are things where people will promise you a representation as an artist, take your money and then do nothing. That is a thing as well in the art world. There's also like fake competitions and fake exhibitions. So just make sure you're doing your research and really looking up what uh, you know, the companies or the galleries or whoever it is that you are applying to, if they're legitimate, if they're, are they actually competitive? Uh, it's always a good telltale sign. Pretty much all that I wanna make sure I leave you with in this video is to make sure you trust your intuition and do your research, especially when it comes to online things because it's very easy as a young artist, as a new artist to be excited about the prospect of selling uh, work for a large amount of money uh, and then you tend to skip over the red flags and the signs that just tell you something is off. Always seek advice if something seems off as well. Ask a second opinion from a friend or family member. And also Google is a tool, it's right there. You can literally look up uh, any scams that you just, anything that you have a little uh, you know, feeling in your gut for. So, do your research, seriously. It will save you and, you know, it, it. it's not like the buyers are gonna get that artwork immediately, especially if it's an online sale. They know it's gonna take time to ship, so why do they need to rush and push things? Scammers can get a little pushy. It's kind of like the sleazy salesman thing. They can get pushy with, um, because they want you to give them money, you know? They want you to not think because you're so overwhelmed with these emotions and, and uh, thoughts of, I'm gonna sell a painting. <laughs> so if there's one thing I can leave you with is do your research. If something feels off, don't do it. I think I'm gonna leave you here with that thought for now. And best of luck to the artists out there who are starting out and kind of navigating the scary world of uh, online art careers and things like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if you want to suggest any more video ideas or topics that we can discuss. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you all next time. If you're an artist looking to take your business full time, then head over to the Intuitive Artist Academy to book an exclusive one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with me. I will look at your art and art business and guide you on the right path for your artistic journey. These coaching sessions will leave you feeling inspired and ready to take action for your own art career.